We had a bit of a mishap with the outer layer of the access port cover, so I'm going to be building a new one. You've seen this done before, so we'll skip it quite fast. While we're waiting for some of those other steps to complete, I'm going to get a start on the curved linings. Uh, I'm just going to be using regular pine for this. For a guitar that we sell, we might use more glamorous timber, but pine is just fine. So first we've got a rip and mill. This is my jig for cutting curved linings. It's a plank of wood, a little channel cut out of it, and a headless nail poking out right next to the channel. You put the work up to the blade, and you cut a slot, and this face acts as the stop, so that the slot's are the right depth. You then move it along so that the nail is poking into the slot you've just cut, and you cut another one. And you keep going until you run out of wood. The trick, is positioning it so that the depth is just right to allow the curved linings to bend and the spacing is right for the curvature of the guitar. We'll cut most of our linings for fairly, fairly average spacing and then we'll do a small amount much closer together for the cutaway. There's our curved linings done for now. We'll set them aside. I'm working now on the outer layers of the access port cover. I've got this one roughly trimmed to size and I'm very very gradually finessing it with sandpaper so that it fits inside the access port. When that happens we'll move on to the next step which is something I haven't tried before. Okay, this piece uh, fits inside, it's a bit tight and it doesn't go all the way in, but that's okay because this is not the final fit up. What I'm going to do now is to cut two parts of this uh, jarrah for the two strips along the top and the bottom, and then two straight pillars at the sides. Once we've got those in place, I'll cut a smaller rectangle of the black wood to go in the middle. And then it'll, it'll be a matter of gluing it together so there's no gaps and the uh, border is symmetrical around the outside uh, with just a little bit of overhang that we can then trim back just as I've been doing for the final fit up. I've clamped the two top and bottom curved pieces to the backing plate. That allows the centerpiece to slide in and be centered top and bottom. I've drawn two lines on the side and I can measure in uh, from the inside using the calipers. So what I'm going to do is glue the centerpiece in, then I will glue the top and bottom. We'll do the side pieces later, that will involve a little bit of excavating of squeeze out with a chisel, but I don't think I'm going to be able to clamp it all together in one hit. <laughs> Now 
Now that is not finally clamped, but it means the second the centerpiece <coughs> will stay in place while we put the top and bottom strips. squeeze out is going to be everywhere. Fortunately these layers are t uh, thicker than they need to be so we're going to be sanding them down quite a lot. While you weren't watching I unclamped the piece, cleaned up the worst of the squeeze out uh, and trimmed two upright pieces so now we'll glue those in place. The joints aren't white as hairline as I had hoped so we will have to see I will press on we'll see how they respond to finishing and I'll decide whether I will uh, try and improve upon this method or just go back to the uh, the plain uh, access port cover from my previous guitars a fairly small issue that I'm up against now is that this piece is slightly less curved than this piece and I'm worried that if I get it to fit perfectly when we laminate the two together these two ends will be closer together and it'll be a bit loose so what I'm going to do is moisten the pine layer and clamp it against this core give it a little time to think about what it's done after a lot of work and trust me it was a lot we have the outer layer of the cover fitting into the access port. We now have to glue that layer to this part and for that alignment is critical. So I'm going to hammer in two nails uh, from the inside to the out and I'm going to try and make the nails vertical rather than perpendicular to the curve of the port. I just want them to stick out a tiny bit Then we will put this door in, place this, press them together and we'll have indexing pins and alignment so that we can glue them together. We'll rip the nails out later obviously. And I'm pushing the outer layer against those nails. Now when we take it out we've got these holes we can use that to align while we glue it. Find the holes. While we're waiting for that to dry, I think we'll make a start attaching the curved linings. We'll conduct this like a computer game where the first level is easy and then it gets harder and harder as you level up. The easy quadrant is the top flat soundboard side, non-cutaway. It's just a matter of taking this, finding out how much we need, cutting it, gluing it in. And for that we're going to be using laundry clamps. I'm 
leaving about two or three millimetres at the top. That's the untidy part and that'll be sanded away. And the curves are all gentle and easy. Turning it over, I can get rid of some of the squeeze out, not all of it, but the worst of it. And I can also check to see that the joins are good and tight. And in fact, at the moment, I can see that around the waist, they're not. So I'll have to do something about that. Sorted now. We'll wait for that to dry. Then we'll do the flat cutaway side. I have unclamped the cover and checked that it fits in, yay. What I will do now is remove the uh, nails that we were using as index pins. I put in a couple of extras because having it line up is really important. I have marked a point dead center, so we're going to drill that. We already have these four holes, I now also need to extend them outwards through the front of the cover. There is much room for improvement, but I think under a layer of shellac on the guitar, it's going to look quite nice from a distance of, say, something like that. Time for the next quadrant of curved linings. And this is the one where we've got the cutaway. And although I made a section of the curved lining with the curves closer together, still not quite enough to get into that cutaway horn there. So what I'm going to need to do is to just mark the area where the curvature won't quite make it and widen the ends of those cuts with a file. spot the uh, unintended mistake from the last two steps. I was going on about how we were doing the easy flat top soundboard side first. All the while the guitar was sitting stably and flat on the table. We were doing the curved surface and that explains why I had trouble with the, uh, with the clamping around the waist because this was done in one piece and when it curves that way it curves out at the waist. So now we've got to do the easy stuff. And on to the final quadrant.
remember the nut strips from the first video? Two strips of wood with brass nuts embedded uh, in two holes in each. These are going to be glued here on the inside so that the nuts can pull against the frame to secure the port cover. The wood on this side is simply to stop the nuts from being poked through because sort of gluing them to a piece of wood is not going to work. They have to be fully enclosed. There is a there is an edge here that is going to protrude inside the opening. So I will endeavour not to put glue on that part. But we're going to have to do it with the door in place, so hence all the candle wax and heat gun you saw me doing earlier. This is awkward to clamp because those screws get in the way, but they're needed for alignment. Well, we now have a fully operational access port. It's screwed in. The levels are not perfect, but sanding will fix that. We also have our curved linings, top and bottom. They, in particular, are a little proud by design, as are the access port frame and the neck block. So I am going to use the band sander to bring the curved linings down to about half a mil, proud of where they need to be, top and bottom. Then we will use our radius sanding sticks for the back and our flat sanding stick for the front to get everything ready for the soundboard and the back. That is a nervous job, and with good reason. You can't see what you're doing. And I actually ended up taking about a quarter of a mil off the profile of the back. So we're going to be doing the rest of the levelling by hand and smoothing out that minuscule little divot. top as flat as I can get it using sanding sticks. I made myself a reference flat but it's uh, it needs a little bit of uh, assistance to be flat these days. So let's see if I can do the uh, double sided sticky tape on a flat surface trick. drawing all over the surface, then sanding on a flat surface and seeing which pencil marks have been removed is telling me that the neck block and the tail cord frame are high spots on the top of the guitar. So I'm kind of aggressively sanding them down and then we'll put it against the surface again and see how close it gets. All of my pencil marks are gone, so I'm confident that this is a good flat top. I'm kind of discovering that for hogging material off, the Shinto is a much better tool than my band sander. If you don't have a Shinto, you don't have a shop leaves the top of the wood kind of rough, which means that when you do come to sand, the sandpaper has a much easier job. I'll certainly be updating the notes with this. I'm now 
now satisfied with the flatness of the top and the lines and curves of the back. Look at that rocking, that's, that's looking pretty good. The uh, edge surfaces there are ready to accept the soundboard in the back. One exception, but we'll deal with that in a later video. Cheerio!